Shrimp. I, can't, I can't see anything. Come here. I don't even know what's up or down or whatever. Have zero control. Low battery. Hurry up. Jesus Christ. You must have lost it now. Meet Firefly. He's a 23 gram tiny quad with an analog FPV system and a Crossfire RX. He has a pretty great life, going on trips and exploring little gaps and spaces all over the world. However, image quality has never been very good for this tiny quad, and actually this can be quite dangerous. Ever since Firefly almost drowned in that river, he's dreamt of having a digital FPV system, just like larger quads. However, unfortunately, due to his tiny size, there's just no way he could ever carry a digital system. That is, until now. The new HD0 Whoop Light setup may actually be his answer. Can we help Firefly to become digital, or will we kill him in the process? Let's find out. So it started out as a normal procedure, uh, weighing the patient, 23 grams. Getting the new kit here, and what we're going to be was 27 grams. Um, but some things went wrong. All doctors to the, ER. the operation did not go as planned. Let's go ahead and review what happened. Here we go. Okay, so I think this HD0 Whoop Light install is actually going to be pretty straightforward. What's really cool about this Firefly Quad is that it comes with this Goku versatile all-in-one board that actually has two spare UARTs and multiple 5 volt hookups. So I'm just going to go ahead and solder this up really quickly so we can get to the test flights and see how the Firefly performs with the HD0 installed. Pretty exciting. Okay, so the HD0 VTX is working, however I can't turn off the analog VTX and it's creating a massive heat problem for the build. So I email Flywoo and they respond pretty quickly saying all I have to do is bridge two pads and the VTX will shut off. Super simple, right? Unfortunately that didn't work. The VTX is still on and it's still hot. Email Flywoo back, they respond quickly again, this time remove a chip. I don't really want to remove a chip, but I'll remove a chip. Still on, still hot. As a final attempt, I just decide to remove the RTC 6705 BTX chip and it's over. I don't wanna save ya, don't wanna be strangers. Let me feel like you know what to do. Leave your limitations, live and go against them. Just let go and start up something new. Cause I know, I know, I know what you planned out. Everything that you built up. Okay, so it was a little touch and go, but Firefly is alive and better than ever. He's weighing in at 27 grams and he's carrying the HD0 Whoop Light Digital System. Okay, so the heart and soul of Firefly now is a beta FPV flight controller and ESC with an integrated Express LRS receiver. Now that's pretty cool because I've been looking for an excuse to get an Express LRS system and here we have it. So this board itself does not have a VTX, which is something I was looking for. It also has enough free UARTs and enough 5 volt inputs. However, what I found out is that the HD0 Whoop light system really doesn't like running on 5 volts and it's better to just actually hook it directly to the VCC or the battery positive terminal. That's going to be fine on 1S, but if you were to go above 2S, you probably want to consider using a capacitor. And let's go ahead and test the range, penetration, and of course the image quality of this new little quad setup. Firefly, welcome back to us. Here we go. That's incredible. This is an amazing little camera setup for only eight grams. Look at this video, that's incredible. Um, what we're gonna do next is actually do a direct comparison to look at the old footage from the original analog camera to this new HD0 upgrade. And I think we're gonna see some real significant improvement. 
So in this first shot, we're about to enter the treehouse that we stayed in a few weeks ago. And I think the improvement is pretty obvious here, but you can see the railing, the shadows, the smoothing, everything just looks so much better, including the signal in the video image itself is much nicer. In this shot, it's pretty easy to see that the details in the window frame, as well as the sky and the tree in the background, are just much clearer. Everything just looks more polished in the HD zero footage here. Okay, now here's a couple indoor shots, since I'm sure many of you are going to use this camera indoors. You can just see that the details in all the furniture and the chairs and everything is just far superior. Uh, both cameras have a hard time with bright lights and high contrast. You see we're in the garage here and you can see the lights from the outside in this dark garage are just really blowing out. I'm going to pause here and just look at the details in the roof of the house as well as just the horizon. Uh, bear in mind there is mountains back there but the clouds were covering them on this particular day. So now we're inside of an old barn and it's actually it's pretty dark in here. The, the cameras are brightening it up quite a bit so you're getting a little bit of noise. Getting a lot of high contrast light situations and you can see both cameras are struggling pretty bad. But here's what's interesting is look when we start to fly out the door. Right now we can see outside but with the analog footage it was pure white. The HD Zero camera is certainly able to handle a high dynamic range a lot better. Okay, so now we're going to do a little penetration test of this HD Zero Whoop Light VTX. And the way we're going to do that is by flying around through this old barn. Now the barn itself is made out of concrete, steel, and wood. And it's got a lot of different rooms. And we're going to see how many rooms we can get through before this thing completely loses signal either video signal or potentially this new ELRS signal. I'm hoping both will do pretty well. So let's go ahead and get to the test. Here we go. Okay, so as we cruise around through the barn doing this penetration test, Firefly had asked me to share a couple thoughts with you guys. He says despite the extra weight from the upgrade, he doesn't notice any issues in handling, and he's still getting over five minutes of flight time using a 500 milliamp hour battery pack. And now with this new all-in-one board, he can run up to 2S voltage, so he's thinking about tuning himself to see if he could carry an extra battery and enjoy some additional power. Now one thing Firefly would like to try is some new glass to see if we can reduce this hazing and the flare that we get from very bright lights. And we've been working on a few different options for him, testing some different camera lenses, and so far the initial tests have actually shown a pretty big improvement in both clarity and reducing the hazing of light. Now Firefly also mentioned a pretty funny thing. He said if you guys were interested in seeing the rest of this video where he almost got lost forever, I didn't even know where, I didn't even know what's up or just let us know in the comments. We'll go ahead and share that video because that was pretty funny. So actually, that did really surprisingly well. I mean, in the very back of the barn, we were losing signal pretty hard. I think even the ELRS was having a hard time at that point. But bear in mind, those are pretty heavy duty concrete silos and penetration getting through there is extremely difficult. So anyway, pretty cool tests. I'm satisfied with those results. This is a tiny little mini quad or a mini whoop that you're flying this VTX with. You're probably not doing a whole lot of super penetration stuff like that, or maybe you are, and if you are, good news, because you can in fact do some decent penetration with this VTX combo set at 200 milliwatts. Well, until next time, Firefly and Giant Ant Cowboy are flying out.